Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 15th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. It's Microsoft Patch Tuesday, so of course I'll start with what Microsoft has been patching. We have patches for 60 different vulnerabilities. Two of these vulnerabilities have already been exploited and are publicly known. There was a third one that was just publicly known, but according to Microsoft has not been exploited yet. One of the vulnerabilities, and this is a privilege escalation vulnerability in the Windows DWM core library, has apparently already been exploited by Qbot, according to Kaspersky. But Kaspersky also states that this vulnerability was apparently used by other actors as well, which sort of makes sense given how widespread Qbot is. So hard to believe that a vulnerability used by Qbot wouldn't be picked up by anybody else. The second vulnerability is a security feature bypass a bug in Windows MS HTML has a CVSS score of 8.8 and is likely one of those things where it is easier because of this vulnerability to trick a user into open a malicious file received via email. The third vulnerability that has been disclosed publicly but has not been exploited is a Visual Studio denial of service vulnerability. Overall, probably not quite an interesting enough vulnerability to really find widespread exploitation. We also, and that's sort of a little bit odd that we only have a one critical vulnerability in this set of patches. The critical vulnerability is a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft SharePoint server. It does require an authenticated attacker with site owner permissions. So that makes it also less likely to be widespread exploited. And yesterday I mentioned the new Apple uh, releases, uh, one new feature that was included in this release that I actually sort of forgot to mention was uh, the ability to track Bluetooth trackers other than Apple's AirTags. Google and Apple have been working together with on this and Google also released a blog post about this new feature. It's included in Android 6 and later uh, devices as well as now in iOS 17.5. The goal of this feature is to enable you to detect any Bluetooth trackers traveling with you, regardless the manufacturer and Google, Apple have been collaborating on a standard to enable this detection. And in other patch Tuesday updates, we do have updates for VMware's workstation and fusion products. There are a total of four different vulnerabilities being addressed here. They sort of all have in common that the attacker does need some level of access to a guest running on a particular host machine and is able to use this access to execute code on the host. Of course, these type of vulnerabilities are typically of concern to anybody using VMware for analyzing malware. And as a little side note here, Today, Broadcom, who now owns VMware, also announced that VMware Workstation and Fusion will be available for free for personal use. This includes the pro version of the products. And of course, we got updates from Adobe as well. They include Dreamweaver, FrameMaker, Animate, Substance, 3D Designer, Arrow, Substance 3D Painter, Illustrator, and most importantly, Adobe Acrobat Reader, which fixes a number of critical vulnerabilities that may lead to arbitrary code execution. And we also got an update from Microsoft. It's actually a little bit older. It was released the end of April, thanks for Gepper to pointing this uh, out to me. And it really relates uh, to an older vulnerability, Black Lotus, a vulnerability in Secure Boot. 
Secure boot basically means that you are able to verify if the device you're booting from is safe to boot from and well it relies on certificates to have firmware and the actual boot sector digitally signed. Now the problem with Black Lotus is that initial mitigation techniques that Microsoft tried weren't really quite complete. So they're now basically getting ready to swap out existing certificates that were so far used to sign Microsoft's software. That of course can cause some disruption because the new certificates are not trusted by your system by default and by revoking the old certificates, old software, so older versions of Windows may no longer work. There is a good knowledge base article by Microsoft that was released uh, end of April and that's sort of what I'm referring to here as part of the April update. They actually did release an updated certificate database. The other issue and the other sort of reason why they're doing this is that the existing certificates, so the older certificates are about to expire in about two years. These certificates will expire, which then of course means that at that point they will no longer be trusted anyway. So in some ways you do have two years to either update the certificate database or to disable secure boot. The problem with updating the certificate database is that this is also somewhat firmware dependent. And apparently there is, for example, some HP systems uh, that have firmware that the database can at least right now not currently being updated with. So overall, this may be a fairly complex update process. Again, try to get ahead of it if you're relying on secure boot for security. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if you like this podcast, why not leave a comment with your favorite podcast platform or as usual, just recommend it to some friends. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. There's a slight chance that I won't get around to do a podcast tomorrow on Thursday just because of the travel on Wednesday. But uh, if the flights work out okay, I should be able uh, to uh, record something. Thanks and talk to you again, hopefully tomorrow. Bye.